Josh, are we officially halfway? Are we more than halfway now? We're pretty close to officially. Um, wow. I think, I mean, if we judge by contract end date, that's 1231-21. So we're still not quite, well, I guess, you know, we started about this time last year. So we're probably about halfway exactly. Yeah, it's been a year. What a year. But hopefully I think we're a little bit farther than halfway in terms of our, our progress toward a draft plan because we want to we don't want to give that to you on December 21st before the 31st. <laughs> we'll hopefully have that by the end of the summer or so or you know early fall. So I think we're closer. Yeah, let's now that winter's coming, let's talk summer. Warm thoughts. Oh, yeah. Vaccines. Yeah, that. <laughs> As long as they don't put egg in it, I'm allergic to the flu shot. So oh, hopefully no. there's no egg. Yeah, no, I've gotten this far, knock on wood. So personal interest. Do you want me to start sharing my screen? Sure. Hello. Evening, James. How's everybody doing? Good. Don't you have Think, a meeting tonight? Yeah, and I chose yours. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, my uh, the transportation advisory committee was supposed to be last week, and they moved it to this week. But you scheduled it first, so. What's it going to be? Speed humps and stop signs or master plan? Those are, that's a tough decision, Jim. Yeah, I know. We <laughs> can stuff here. We appreciate your dedication. Thank you. I don't know if you've thought about this, but I think just banning trucks would make a big difference. Oh, <laughs> uh, we did just get uh, uh, trucks banned on a couple of roads over near the. Um... Yeah, near Sprague. Yes, yes. You probably haven't yet seen the combined request from the four other streets on the other side of East Street that now are seeing the trucks that can't go on those roads and want to ban them over there. That, that is the problem when banning trucks on some roads <laughs> <laughs> or changing speed limits or any of these things. Everybody wants it. Well, I appreciate your service uh, on that committee. <laughs> John takes the brunt of it. All right, so it looks like we got six folks thus far. Committee members, that is. Yeah, it's good to see some familiar MAPC faces here in the crowd. Hello, everybody. Great, we get Jen and Travis back. Yeah, a little, little bonus time with yeah. our economic development and transportation. It's a reunion. Stuff. So I know that um, Sharna is coming. 
uh, let's see. Oh, and Dan is here. That's exciting because we thought he wasn't gonna be able to make it. We didn't hear from anybody else, right, about um, other conflicts. Okay, so it looks like we have nine committee members now. Give one more minute, if you don't mind. Okay. Let's round it up to 10. Are we on um, Facebook Live for this one? I believe a Facebook Live link was sent out, but I don't know. Jeremy, is this our Zoom or MAPC Zoom? This is ours. We're on Facebook. We are on Facebook? Okay, great. And we are public. I will share it. All right, Justin, Sarah, you mind if we get started? Go for it. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Jeremy Rosenberger, Planning Director from the Town of Dedham. Uh, welcome everyone to the 11th meeting of the Designing Dedham 2030 Master Plan Process, uh, Dedham's 10-year uh, effort towards developing strategies and goals um, to a, a variety of different topic areas, housing, economic development, um, transportation, public health, governance, cultural and uh, civic resources, to name a few. So thank you everyone for being here tonight. Um, yeah, about a year ago, Josh and I were reminiscing. Uh, we started this endeavor about a year ago in December. I mean, December, November, right around this time. So thank you all for your commitment, committee members. And I know uh, we've been uh, on a tear since then, meeting every month. So we all appreciate for your uh, high attendance every month that uh, you've put forth to this effort. And um, there's been a lot of information presented, a lot of discussion. So thank you all for your efforts thus far. And um, we'll keep going. And we appreciate it. So Josh, if you want to go to the next slide. So just uh, uh, the typical um, preface stuff, uh, the meetings being recorded. This is also on uh, Facebook Live on our planning and zoning Facebook page. Um, make sure you mute until uh, and use the raise your hand function when you want to speak um, to ensure the best quality audio and uh, you know making sure that folks are talking over each other. Um, and we set aside uh, time at the end of our agenda for a public comment. Um, I don't see any public yet, but I'm sure they'll join us and we'll um, we set aside time um, if necessary for public comment at the end. Josh, next slide if you don't mind. And so our agenda tonight, I, I've sent this out previously, so we're going to mix it up a little bit tonight. Um, so we, I, I presented these to you, I believe, last week. We, we've come about, and through a couple revisions, we shared the draft one-sheet summaries. And these are, uh, you know, quote-unquote, one-sheet summaries of the topics, the strategies that we've talked about. And hopefully you've all read those. Uh, we're going to talk about that for a little bit. We'll love to hear your feedback. Um, if you don't get around to it tonight, we're taking comments up until the end of this week, the 20th. We want to get these public next week and uh, before the open house. So all your feedback uh, tonight and after this meeting up until the 20th will be graciously appreciated. 
We're going to talk about the community open house December 7th, 7 o'clock. That's a Monday night. Look forward to, to uh, our next community engagement, and I'm sure it'll be well attended. We'll talk about uh, the progress on that and the format and your roles as committee members. Um, and uh, the next topic will be community engagement, which is intertwined with that and what we've been doing to ensure there's excitement and continued visibility and presence of this master plan in this COVID area, which is no small task, but thanks to you all and the many members of Dedham, we've had great engagement thus far and we hope that continues. And then, you know, the biggest change, originally we were gonna talk about uh, natural, uh, uh, sorry, history and our natural resource assets. But we wanted to, uh, you know, pump the brakes on that for a meeting. We realized, and you know, it's easy for Josh. We're, we're, you know, uh, sometimes we, we got our head down just trying to get through, all, not get through all this, but making sure that we stay to, uh, you know, uh, a timeline, and we're making the best use of your time. But realizing that we've provided you with a lot of information, and and thankfully at the same time, you've also challenged us with a challenged us with a number of questions, comments, and feedback. We figured let's before we get to this open house and based on your feedback, let's just take a pause. Um, let's talk about any um, outstanding comments, questions that you might have, talk process. Are there better ways we can conduct some of these committee meetings? What do you think about some of the ones we've had? And um, Jess is going to help us through that and facilitate that open discussion. And um, you know, we're open to it. We want to we want to make this the best experience for you, and we want to allow that we're setting the dinner table appropriately for you so that you can actually consume and you know manage what we're putting in front of you and that, that's a tough task it's never easy but uh we want to make sure it's it's manageable and you can actually uh you know uh handle what we provide and lastly we'll talk about some next steps and ultimately again beginning we have the open house um, December we'll also be having our we'll moving on to the next topic area which is the natural resources and historic assets which I'm sure will be another great conversation and then ultimately open it up to public comment and adjourn. Um, Josh I, uh, I'm happy to hand it to you. Thank you everyone. Let me unmute. Thank you Jeremy. Um, good evening everyone. Good to see you all again. Uh, so let's, uh, let's dive right into the one sheeters and talk a little bit about the community open house and then we'll make sure to leave plenty of time for you all to just, uh, as Jeremy said, kind of catch our breath and, and discuss whatever needs to be discussed up to this point, kind of reflect on those topics which we've covered. Um, we, we all know this very well, but these are the values which are driving our conversations. I think we've, uh, kept in line with them very well over each of the past meetings. So I would expect we'll do the same moving forward. And just for anyone out there who's viewing this live or a recording of it, uh, our steering committee membership is shown on the screen. We have many of those members with us this evening, uh, dedicated souls who are really taking this process uh, and leading it um, for the town, which is fantastic representative of a variety of boards, committees, and groups uh, in interest areas which are uh, relevant to the master plan. So thank you all for your commitment. And now let's just dive into the one sheet summaries. So before I, I get into the specific economic development and transportation one sheet summaries, just a little bit of a reminder what, what this information is. So um, as you all know, we've been going through those topic area discussions uh, covering each of the topics of the master plan one by one with the committee. Our, our goal all along, of course, has been not to only talk about those topics with the committee, but also with the community at large. We will be embarking on that discussion with the um, general public on uh, December 7th. Uh, with a, the first of a series of open houses. These draft one-sheeters, uh, one-sheet summaries, I, I call them one-sheeters, that's my, my <laughs> nickname, um, but these draft one-sheet summaries are, are basically a, a useful tool for us to be able to preview the information that will be presented in those open houses and also to structure feedback from you all, but feedback from the community as well. So if you can imagine, we're, right now we're looking at the front end of this process of developing the one-sheeters and engaging the community, but we will have around 10 or so of these topics. And so we'll have a, 10, a set of 10 one-sheet summaries in the end, 
which will will define a pretty um, concrete direction for where the master plan's headed. So um, once we get through the process of, of what we're embarked on, which is each of these topic committee meetings, um, then the one sheet summaries, then getting those out to the public, then having the open house for each topic. When we conclude that later on uh, in 2021, around March of 2021, that's what this series of workshop open houses will, will take us to, we'll have a very solid idea of the goals and priorities for each of the topics of the master plan. And then from there, we can really, with confidence, dive into some of the details around strategies and actions and uh, do it in such a way where we've engaged the community in those conversations to get to that point. So we think, we think of them as tools of the process and ways to engage people um, around the goals and priorities so that they, they are able to let us know if we're on the wrong track pretty early on. And then hopefully uh, it helps to build confidence and um, support for where the recommendations in the master plan are headed. And so if you look, think about all that in a hierarchy, here's the overarching structure where we've got the, the vision statement, which is still um, in process and will be worked on by a subgroup of the committee um, to get that refined to the committee's liking. And then that will be uh, sort of sitting atop of all of these goals and priorities for the individual topic areas. And then from that will flow the goal strategies and actions which are part of the implementation uh, tables of the master plan. So all of that, once uh, the nice thing about doing this too is when we start to see where all of these different topics are headed, we'll start to see where the synergies overlaps um, and um, you know, coordination uh, components lie. And so we'll be able to really define if there's uh, something that's showing up as a like-minded goal across several topics, we know that's kind of a meta priority or, or uh, should be pushed to the top and elevated. So that getting all this information in draft form and, and starting to understand what the content is for each of these areas is critical in that way as well. So it's all, it's all a very sort of interlinked and interwoven network of ideas. So without um, much more preamble, let's just talk a little bit about the two one sheet summaries, which now you have before you. So for economic development and transportation, I'll just flip through them quickly on the screen, but hopefully um, I'm not sure how legible they are in this format for you on the other side of this, but if you have them also available as the attachment that Jeremy sent, you might wanna bring them up just so you can take a quick look too but I'll flip through them. So this is economic development. And just to give you a feel for the, the components here. So each of the one sheet summaries have um, four basic parts. So the first part is the uh, existing conditions like was presented to you in the presentation. Uh, so there's what we call economic development in Dedham today. And that, that highlights the high points of what we think the, the most important part of that um, information is. And then we have the second part which is consistent for each of the one sheet summaries, which is community input. And that's summarizing the key features which we pulled out from the extensive community survey responses, which we received through those two community surveys. The third component is outlining those goals for the topic area. So in this case, we're looking at the economic development goals. And then the fourth, part, fourth uh, component of each of the one sheeters is just letting people know who have gotten this document how to engage with the information, how to provide comments, uh, look, look to other presentations that have been given on the topic and provide us feedback. So those, those will be consistent um, across the documents. So when you, get, when you see one of these, if you see another one later on in the process, hopefully there will be a familiarity to them and a legibility because of that familiarity. So um, let me just flip through the transportation as well, just to get a feel for this. And then maybe I will, um, we'll see how, how much of a, a structure we have or need, need for this conversation or if you all are ready for some revisions and comments. So you see the transportation format following in the same manner uh, with those four parts. With a little bit of um, imagery and highlights and maps uh, and graphics for some, some high points within each of the topics too. 
So let me just head backward uh, to, we'll start with economic development. And if, if you all, so I guess maybe we'll, I'll try to judge from your Zoom squares. Uh, if you'd like to maybe give me a nod. If, you, if you're just, if have, you've reviewed this and you're ready to just give us some comments, give me a, a nod or thumbs up, or I could have Jen walk through this a little bit in terms of the actual content. Andrew's got a thumbs up for, he's ready to go. Shaw's ready to go. All right, so it sounds like we can just uh, skip more of our talking and just give you all some room to give us some feedback. So um, if you want to, in an orderly way, raise your hand and be recognized, I guess that would probably be best so we can avoid stepping on each other. So Justin quickest and then Alex, maybe you're next. So uh, my question is on um, the part three. I, I understand you know, that it comes from uh, surveys um, <clears throat> and things. Uh, perhaps because of the amount of information that we cover in every one of the meetings, I missed it. But did, did we actually get a chance to talk about these and, and formulate these as part of our meetings? I don't, there's an awful lot of listening parts one and two and you know even part four make a lot of sense, but a little background on where the part three comes from, when that was formulated, is this the first time I'm seeing it? Yeah, yeah, so the, um, it, it might have been a little, might have been a little bit um, less obvious than the other parts, but so part three um, was effectively structured <laughs> in the conversations we had in those committee meetings. Um, so in each of the uh, topic presentations, at the end of those presentations, we went, I think pretty clearly as you're stating, went through part one and part two. But then at, at the very end of those presentations, we highlighted, which we thought were um, the result of that analysis and feedback from the community. So that's, that's where this is coming from. And, and it responds to this, the discussion we had in those committee meetings as well. Um, but this is, this is the first time you're seeing this in a concrete written form, the way it is articulated in those one sheeters. And so by all means, uh, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't feel like you missed something. This is the first time it's really laid out in such detail as this. Um, and so it's, it's really the first time you, you are able to give us concrete feedback on these ways, the ways they're written out this way too. So um, they, they were talked in, in sort of looser um, conversational language in those meetings but, but I think now they're, they're starting to take a little more form. So that's, that's the background there. And Alex. Thanks. Um, mine is actually more to form than to actual content. I don't understand why the one sheet is two sheets. Um, and if this is for public consumption, I feel as though the, the orange is really off-putting to me, the amount of orange, not necessarily on this page, but on the first one. Um, and the, just the, the pure, just level of, of information on it. I think we really want someone to look at this and, and, and read it and get an idea about where we're going. <laughs> it needs to be pared down. I just don't see this as being something that really is um, all that viable in terms of a summary. <laughs> it just seems like it's an awful lot of information for, for a summary. And again, I don't see why we're calling it a one sheet <laughs> summary when it's, when it's two sheets. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I feel that. Um, feedback. I, I think that it's a tough balancing act we're trying to do and the, the one sheeters are a little, it's a, a front and back of a one sheet. It's a little bit of a cheat. Um, but we do, we do have a fair amount of um, detailed information that we're trying to communicate. And, and I think balancing the level of information is, is a critical one. We're, we're trying to pack a lot of information in for sure. The um, I think that the difficulty is if, if we move too high level in terms of information, then people will feel like they were surprised by things later on. And um, it, it, it's easier, I think, in the, the detail, the information that we're trying to provide, which I th still think is at a summary level, is, is trying to give people enough um, content to get a hold of where we think this is headed. Um, and so it, it's, it's helpful to us as a team to have it at this level um, because it gives us a more, more of a comfort level and gives our team more, more feedback in terms of way that, where they actually might be headed. And um, 
avoids the situation where they might be a little bit feeling like they're a little bit in the dark in terms of getting some ideas floated out to the community and getting some reaction to it. So that's that's the balancing act. I, I We have gone back and forth um, ourselves in our own teams, but also with the co-chairs and Jeremy and Michelle, just in terms of trying to improve on the readability and the legibility of the information. And believe it or not, it's gotten better from where it was before. Um, the But certainly I, I think if you have um, maybe more specific recommendations about how we could shorten it up or um, make it more readable. We'd, we'd be all ears for that because that's definitely a goal. The orange color is associated with the color spectrum we've had for the topics. Um, so I guess if, you, if the orange is really off-putting or, or hard to read, which we're, we're sensitive to in terms of um, color blindness or other difficulties, um, then uh, we can make an adjustment on that, but it, this will not be what the color is for all the topics. So if you're more of a, a blue or, or turquoise tor sort of hue, then you'll see some topics in those hues as well. Uh, let's go with, I've got Andrew and Jessica both, I've, and Shaw, I see. So how about um, Andrew, why don't you go ahead? I wanted to go back for a moment to the topic of the goals. Um, I, I had a very similar comment, um, but be, be beyond that, they're presented here as drafts, and I think we probably need to more explicitly invite input into them because several of these are things that, while I, they may represent some sort of consensus, even if not a universal agreement, as Nathan's comment on the chat says, with all of them, I suspect that there may not be universal agreement about all of them in the community. Um, you know, I can think of a couple of these, just to pick a couple of examples, when you talk about parking, there's probably going to be a significant fraction of people who just say, build more parking. I can't park, build more parking. Or they'll say, why are we preparing for electric vehicles? Climate change is, you know, a hoax. It's a fool's errand. Why are we doing this? Um, so, although, so what this boils down to is their drafts, we, I guess we've talked about them. But I think we need to be very explicit that they're that we're soliciting input on them because um, they caught me a little bit by surprise as well. Okay, that's that's great feedback. Yeah, we can I, we can make more clear, maybe bolden it or make it larger text that this the goals especially, but the the one sheeters kind of in their entirety are working products that. Are, are meant to gather feedback and try to build consensus. Um, so we'll just make sure that that's- But you have two pieces and uh, data is data. There's no, there's no discussion or input about that necessarily. So the first two parts of this are, here's the data and here's what the community has told us so far. That's not soliciting input. This part and, and then four is sort of soliciting input, but, but three is the policy side. The goals are the policy decision of the town about what it wants to try to do. And that's what we're likely to get most controversy about and what we need input most about. Agreed, good point. Uh, so Jessica. Thanks. Um, let me just add one quick thing relative to Andrew's <laughs> comment, which is I do think in the um, setup of the goals, it's worth, I think, um, adding something about, so I like how the upfront talks about how it's, you know, the goals are based on the data, the surveys, the input from the committee, um, the public, it, it actually misses to one key component, which is our experts, and that's you and your colleagues, Josh. And I think it's fair to put that in too, right? So it's like, you know, consultation with experts in the field you know, planning experts, whatever it is. I don't know if it's the same sentence each time or if it's specific to the topic, but I would, I think that's important because to Andrew's point, I mean, it may be that um, as the public starts to see them, you know, the public has input. I do think we can, I hope we can all agree that there's some things which um, are absolute, right? Like we're, we wouldn't, it may be that the, the um, community is not interested in thinking about climate change, but I don't think we'd ever, allow someone to say climate change isn't real and that's going to influence what we do right so i just think somehow weighing it making sure that we weigh that um there are you know it's not just those of us who are amateurs but there are some professionals involved too 
Um, so that's well, one. My, my reaction to that is if you make this, you know, if, if the people get the impression that these are goals that the experts are forcing on the town, you're going to go down in flames very fast. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. But I think, I mean, I when I read that, you know, introduction, it's the kind of context for these goals. I think that's the experts are one aspect of it, right? <laughs> um, so I, I guess my question, my, I have a couple of things. And one is just a more um, like high level question in terms of these goals, which is how granular, like, I mean, I, I guess is, this is kind of, these are the big goals. And then we'll start to get into more specific action items down the road, right? And the reason I ask is, so for instance, over the past couple of weeks, I've gone to a few different um, webinars and meetings about economic development. And one of the things that it really strikes me is that um, Dedham, I think, suffers from not having a chamber of commerce or some similar body, right? That we just really don't have, um, you know, the, the town, doesn't have a great database and way to like contact our businesses. So that's come up even in thinking about how to invite people to, um, you know, our upcoming workshop in December. Um, we don't have any kind of unified chamber and the town is um, at least, you know, in name or in theory served by the Neponset Valley Chamber of Commerce, but they're really not, they're not focused on Dedham and they're certainly not focused on small businesses in Dedham. And, and so I just, just so I can understand how this all fits in, is that something, of, if that were to be a goal, a specific like action item that would come out, um, that there was agreement for, is that, would that end up being in a future document or future um, iteration of this, something that comes under like ED 3.3? Or is that something that we should be talking about now? I guess that's my question. Yeah, yeah, I think there's a few, um, in my experience in these master plan processes, there, it's better to get these goals out as soon as possible, just so that we can start to have more concrete conversations about what the content yeah. of the plan is. Mm -hmm. But they, but don't get nervous that this is like we're trying to get this right right now. It's basically a tool of the process. Um, the goals may, you know, some of these goals might make it all the way through the process and be very similar to the way they're worded now in the end. But some of them might might change. There might be new ones that show up along the way in the conversation, and then they will get more detailed and granular. To your point, Jessica in terms of the strategies and actions that we articulate to make these goals actionable. Um, and then in, in some ways, as we're doing that creation of strategies and actions later on in this process, um, we'll find that there are some strategies and goals that don't nest neatly under one of these goals. So there, there'll be strategies and actions that are a little bit orphaned. And then in which case we might wanna formulate a new goal, which gives those strategies a place to mm -hmm. um, sit. So, so it will be, it is always um, a, an iterative process, uh, which, in, you know, we're trying to move from sort of this, this place where we are, which is we have some analysis um, and some community input via the surveys, but, but it's kind of a wide open uh, world in terms of what the master plan might want to say in the end. And we're, mm -hmm. this is our first stab at trying to um, get our arms around the, that, um, content a little bit, but it will be, um, it will shift both in terms of its uh, depth being added underneath it, but also just in terms of the, the priorities as they're uh, articulated today will also shift. Okay, great. Thank you. And so then one other thought is, you know, I think particularly right now with COVID, I mean, these are really, for the most part, um, living on screens as opposed to on paper, right? And so I just feel like there's an opportunity to be linking them to each other, which again, helps to reinforce for, the, for ourselves and for the public how connected they are. And so, you know, for instance, like um, we're looking at economic development, oh, you're, at, sorry, I'm on economic development on my screen. So on transportation, for instance, um, well, if you go to economic development, the enhanced route one connections, um, I think, I can't remember if there was somewhere else around, um, you know, pedestrian bicycle use comes up in 3.3, housing comes up in 3.1. Um, I wonder if we could add hyperlinks somehow or a note at the bottom of some of these where they are interconnected to kind of note like, you know, related to transportation, you know, see that one pager here, but just something so that it's kind of a, um, even though they're one pagers that they're, they're networked together 
um, not just as we talk about them, but actually, you know, through hyperlinks in the in the documents themselves. I think that's a great point. Um, as we, the, another feature that I didn't point out of these is in the center of the sheet here, we have draft for discussion, this little box. And the what we're trying to do there is actually help people understand that there will be iterative versions of this. So this is version 1.0. And I think as we get, you know, with your comments, there'll be a version 2.0 with an issue date of that version. And then as we get feedback from the community, there'll be more versions, et cetera. So people can see that these documents are shifting. And as we, as we get to the point where we feel a little more confident that um, some of the content here is starting to get you know, vetted by you all, feels a little more firm, then we can start doing some of those things like Jessica's saying, maybe make it a little more interactive, create some links that work to the website. We've tried to create in part four of these one sheeters, some of those active links already in place so people can click on the website, people can click to email Jeremy or myself, people can click to watch the video of our committee discussion on the topic. So all that's very helpful if people are looking at the PDF um, live. Great, thanks. And then uh, I, oh, sorry. I was just gonna say, it looks like Dan has a follow-up to my points if we wanna stay on subject before I'm going to the next person. Yeah, Shaw's sure. next. Dan, yeah, quickly. Sure, um, and just on, on economic development, not to take us in the weeds, it's something that I will follow up on, but just his point about having some experts weigh in, and I know there's a fine balance, for instance, nowhere, and, and shame on me, but nowhere is an arts overlay district for East Dedham mentioned. And I'm not sure, my guess is there's probably only a handful of people in the town that realize that, but my guess is that some of the experts may surface something along. So East Dedham Square and the Milton Street Industrial Corridor are all under an arts overlay district. The previous economic development officer or director had a real vision on how the creative arts could be an economic engine. The Motherbrook Arts and Community Center was only kind of a small portion of it. So I, when I read through economic development, I think that's something that's unusual, but I think it's probably an expert or someone else that may have more to bring to the surface than just getting the, the input as well. So, and that's just one example that mentioned that I, I support maybe having a little bit more um, of the, the others within the town and MAPC and, and provide some, some thought too. Thank you, That's Dan. That's a great point, Dan. So just in terms of, so um, for Josh and Jen feedback on this specific one in that 3.3 bullet, it might even be worth flagging that East Dedham Arts Overlay District as one potential local business district to be invested in, right? Cause we, we did establish that and Jen, I can catch up with you offline and um, and give you background about that too, but it that just might be a way that it's, um, I think mentioning that in the context of that, if there's a way to weave it in just high level, uh, will also just help people see that we are looking, these are specific to datum, right? We've been thinking about that. I think that sounds good. Thanks, Jessica. Yeah. Shaw, you were next and then uh, Sarah. Shaw, the floor is yours. I want to unmute. You're good. All, all set? Yep. Okay, good. Thanks. Um, building on, on uh, a point that Dan made and supplemental to J Jessica's, I think there's a repository of things that we've done in the past that are not fully reflected. Uh, so let me just uh, focus on economic development and again, sort of 3.3, uh, there's been analyses, there have been analyses done specifically by the MAPC about transit oriented development, which leads me to think that there ought to be some reference in the economic development to uh, the, the transportation paper. And again, in, the, uh, in regard to the Dedham Corporate Center and the corridor on Rustcraft Road leading down to the General Dynamics facility, which was you know, a, a site that was contemplated at one point for 
town hall and other municipal services. Um, the MAPC did a very refined study of that whole corridor around the, the topic of transit oriented development. Uh, in addition, while there's reference made to some sites for expansion of industrial job opportunities, there's none mentioned about the Dedham Corporate Center and uh, itself. And my point there is, I guess I like a broken record, is that there's going to be a turnover in the quasi-industrial warehouse type facilities um, sometime in the future. And we ought to make reference to the fact that uh, we believe that that's an area along with the Reedville Yards where there's significant economic development, job growth opportunities oriented around a transit node. Um, and I, you've heard me to say that I think that if, if we were to focus on the, that the way the, the Boston Planning and Development Authority or the Cambridge uh, uh, Redevelopment Authority focused respectively on the waterfront and on the Kendall Square to Cambridge Crossing area, we would see that there's a very rich opportunity there. So my overarching point is twofold. First, we ought to make some cross-reference in the economic development section to transportation. And secondly, uh, we ought to expand the lens of, of uh, sites that are potential for considerable job growth. Dan, of course, has mentioned one. Uh, I've mentioned persistently the Dedham Corporate Center. You've men mentioned here the Reedville Yards. Uh, and I think that, that that's a good signal in a way to the to the uh, to Jeremy Rosenberger and his successors, if there be such, um, that you know these are areas which the planning department ought to be thinking about in a sort of a disciplined way over time. So anyway, those are, I think that's the, the sum of my points. And you you know that in the Dedham Corporate Center, just to repeat. I think that's an area that's ripe for uh, development um, oriented towards the scientific community. Thank you, Shaw. Yeah, good, very good points. Sarah? Can I, um, I just wanna follow up on, on a point Josh made um, about how these drafts sort of being pushed into the world early so that we can work through the inevitable feedback. Um, I, I don't disagree with that, but there's some point during this process where we as individuals and a collective need to get behind the goals that are included. And so I, I guess I, I would just want Josh's perspective or Jeremy or Jess <laughs> on like how do, how do we need to be thinking about you know, I, I don't um, care equally about all of the goals in all of the areas. And so at what point do I need to think about making a bigger stink about wording or prioritization or, you know, going to the map for one I really care about versus um, just sort of looking at these as anything still in the mix and it's a complete open call. I think I think we're at the point a year in where there is a funnel to which this becomes a final product. And I, I just, it'd be helpful to have context on our um, process of decision-making. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a, a good point. We are, we're definitely in the process of narrowing information. That's what we're trying to achieve through this in part. Um, I would say uh, we have, we're, we're in the sort of the beginning of the middle in terms of a, a long uh, and somewhat messy process to get the content this kind of to solidify. And I would say that until we have all, until we've gotten through all topic areas and have um, one sheet summaries like this of this form for all topic areas, it's difficult to um, judge too much in terms of what, what the final word is on what's in or out or where this is headed. Um, so right now, I think we're, we're using these to gather as much information as we can. 
And then we, we will not, why will we, <laughs> I'm trying to say two things sort of at the same time. We will be, I think, making these, doing updates and making them iterative so that the public can, and can be up to date. I think when there's some firm agreement that shows up around a revision that should be made, but we also at the same time, I think we'll be collecting all of the feedback that we receive in the open house and just from comments that come in and from you all between now and March, when we have all of the information in front of us to then be making some final decisions about, well, the one, let's do a final revision on the economic development one sheeter and get kind of all agree that this is the, the set of goals that we wanna get behind. So I, I think there's a bit of a process to get from there and kind of what you're articulating, Sarah. Um, but we, and sorry, the other Josh, thing, sorry to interrupt, but when you say that we, like, we, you know, we're seeking feedback and we're taking input, are you thinking about we as the consultants or is that the role that the committee should be, should still be playing at this point, sort of mindset wide open? Um, the, these are things that, you know, have, have been floated by us, but we're not pushing a point of view. Um, or are you thinking about we as we're, we're working in tandem with you and we need to be actively discussing these, like actually as committee members engaging with the content now so that we can work through this by March? Yes, I think, I think it's more, I guess, the latter of the ways, the way you just described that, that we're, we're giving you, giving the committee this information now in the hope that you will look at it and, and give us feedback if you think, I think the type of feedback that's most useful right now is if you think something's headed in really the wrong direction, or if something is missing the point or, or, or just not relevant in some way, then that's helpful feedback for us to know. Um, we will get, we will be seeking this, that similar level of feedback from the community. And then our goal is to assemble all of the feedback that we've heard, and then to bring that back to the committee in some form. It will probably be the the form of a memo and a conversation uh, in a committee meeting later in the spring to, to then say, you know, this is what we've heard. This is where we started. This is where we think all this inf information may want to migrate to. Um, and at that point, then what we would be doing uh, in the spring is looking for a more concrete sign off from the committee so that we can begin drafting full element sections. So full chapters of the master plan, which would then give you more details around the strategies and actions under these goals. So um, if, if, there's, if there's things as a committee member that you're seeing right now in these one sheeters where you're, where you're thinking like, I don't know where that came from, it makes no sense to me, or you're thinking like, that's not a priority we should be thinking about or anything along those lines, definitely let us know. You don't have to let us, we don't have to get all that aired out this evening. You can send uh, Jeremy or myself an email or, you know, you know, follow up with us on the, a phone call or, or whatever, however you'd like to do it. But we, th that's information we would love to hear and not hear what we're trying to avoid within the committee is, is the committee having really dissatisfaction with where the content is come March without having heard about it between now and then. We'd love to hear about dissatisfaction sooner than later. <laughs> you heard him, air your grievances. And then the, the, the benefit in my experience of doing this, while it might, might seem a little bit early in the process to be ch kind of getting to this point, I, I've been involved in master plan processes where this level of information is not shared until the very end when there are draft sections of a master plan. And that is a horrible way to do it. And it, it always ends up with a mess of confusion and people not liking where it ended up. So we're trying to short circuit that and provide enough feedback loops through this process so that everyone can feel on board with where this ends up. Thank you, Josh. I think Andrew, you wanted to be heard again? No? Okay, you sure? All right, uh, anyone else um, that we didn't hear from? I think everyone uh, had a point. I've got another one if there's nobody who hasn't talked yet. Go for it. Um, so just, a, I have a, I appreciate the conversation about how to think about it um, and kind of what our role is. So I think that's super helpful. While we're all together, I just would bring something up on the transportation one. And so that is that, I don't know if you can pull up um, 
the goals for that. And again, this is, it's hard to know what's a strategy and what's a goal from this perspective, but, or, um, but one of the things that it strikes me about transportation is that, um, and the reason I think it could be a goal <laughs> is that it is, I think we really struggle with, because we don't have a, an individual, you know, at town hall, um, who's specifically responsible for transportation. And we also have um, two different committees that work on transportation in different ways with different levels of support and different levels, levels of authority. Um, and so Sharna and um, Jim can talk to that as being representatives of those two different committees respectively. But I do feel like there's, um, I guess I just struggle with kind of how much we need to build some of the governance into the goals themselves, because I worry that, uh, like, I think when we get to housing um, going forward, you know, there's, it just doesn't make sense to have any housing goals unless one of them is going to be that we're going to actually <laughs> have a staff person who has some level of responsibility for housing, because without that, nothing gets done as we know from last time. So I don't know what, um, how to really articulate that question, but I just wonder, um, I just, I wonder how much we should be embedding that part of kind of staffing and um, structure into some of these goals too. I see some of that, Jessica, uh, you know, falling into this evaluate, improve the implementation of transportation projects. There might be a better way we could term this goal, mm -hmm. you know, uh, maybe, I, and it, I think it goes all to the wording, but that sounds like, you know, that's an action item, mm -hmm. you know, addition, uh, you know, what is it, increased capacity for um, transportation related. I, I don't know where it goes from there, but I see it nestled in there with maybe finessing the, the goal header. Mm -hmm. But, and, you know, I was, I, I think that's a, I agree with your issue there or your know, prospective goal. Yeah. And it could be also that maybe in that text too, Jeremy, we should have yeah. something just about naming the, maybe it's about coordination between like planning director, DPW engineering or something. You know, I think there's, there's just holes. It's, it is an area where I think the silos really catch us up. Yep. And, um, and so if we could be thinking about how to break those down as we're doing the goals, I think that that would help the product. Right. Hey, Sharna, you want to go next? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, so I, I agree with Jessica wholeheartedly. Um, and I also agree with you, Jeremy, that the wording of this paragraph needs a lot of work. Um, because the way it's worded currently, it would appear that transportation projects um, would fall under the guise of the DPW, which is not necessarily the case. Um, so when we're talking transportation, we're talking more than just roadway improvements. We're talking more than just sidewalk enhancements. Um, you know, we're facing some real issues here in Dedham with traffic congestion, as was mentioned um, in the public survey. And I just don't see where any of these goals on this slide are addressing that. Um, we really need to be looking at removing single occupancy vehicles from our roads. Um, we really need to be looking at micro transit options, solving first mile and last mile commute um, between routes one and route one A, and also coordinating our efforts um, for grant funding with our neighboring communities who, um, who are up and down the Route 1 corridor as well. So I think that you know, going beyond the DPW and where it says existing committees, we should be referencing the Neponset Valley TMA. We should be referencing the need to coordinate with our neighboring communities as well. And then certainly to echo what Jessica says, we need to pinpoint where transportation will lie within town governance because currently um, it, it doesn't seem to lie anywhere. So there's no ownership. Thank you, Sharna. Very good points. Justin, did you have your hand up or no, you good? I think Alex yeah. has her hand up. I, I, was, oh, I was just going to, um, governance is one of our topics, correct? That we just haven't gotten to yet. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, a lot of this, I think, a, a lot of I, what we're probably going to see out of a lot of these is that they all play into governance and the fact that 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 has um, an awful lot of committees and not necessarily a clear indication of who 
those committees or you know, that there's a staff person reporting to those committees and, and, and a clear way of coordinating activities between them and as well as letting uh, the, 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 the general public know what's going on. Um, so I, you know, I think we'll get into that at that point, but um, it sort of speaks to the fact that I've, I've sort of come down on, this is not a bad way to go to get these out and, and to allow the conversation to happen and then allow the intersectionality between them to start to come out and additional things you know, start to be added to it. It seems as though uh, that's a, it, it's, it's a good way to, to get this going beyond just the, the fact finding. Okay, so Alex and then uh, Nate. You're on mute, Alex. I apologize. I said right. I was gonna, going to mention the governance aspect of it. I think of it is um, is key with with that. And I think that Jessica mentioned the the connectivity of all of these different sheets. And if we couldn't use this as a way to say, you know, see, you know, another another you know improvement, of course, is how transportation is is um, viewed and is implemented through our government structure. You know, see governance or something of that matter, um, and then have a link. I mean, again, you know, street safety, biking, that's all health. And so I think we could get bogged down by trying to include every little thing in every sheet where we do have the ability to cross-reference. And I think that um, we need to think, you know, does it belong, the transportation person belong on transportation or could it be a governance app, you know, with a link or with a reference to transportation? I, I think those, if I could just add, <clears throat> those are all really good points. And, and what we'll try to do is keep track of all the good ideas that come out of this process. Uh, and then we can do a sorting later on in terms of how, you know, what wants to end up in which topic where, but it's, it'll be a little easier once we get to all 10 topics with one sheeters to see how that sorting looks. Uh, but right now, um, you know, whether it belongs in transportation or not, I think it's fantastic discussion. And then we'll, we'll definitely make note of it and can find its right home. Thank you, Nate. Yeah, thanks. So, in reference to like the government governance piece, I, I see a lot of uh, of the like who's responsible, which committee, do we hire somebody as a means or method, and you know, a, a strategy to achieve the more like um, performance based goals. And um, I guess I was wondering for each of the goals, though. I mean, every single one that we've seen, I, I would imagine they're for them to be successful, we have to have who's responsible, what are they gonna do year one, what's their year five deliverable, how, how do we evaluate if, if they're on track? Um, and is that still part of this document or is that, you know, you know how much of that has to be baked in now and, and is that it's clearly not gonna fall in a one sheeter, but, but for us to be successful in anything, there's, we've gotta have that plan laid out. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. This, this process definitely will get to that. Um, we, we've found, I th my, my approach is that we need to um, narrow down to get to that level of detail so that we, we have confidence in these higher level ideas and goals. And then we'll, we'll move down in, in detail level to the strategies and actions and then ultimately populate an implementation table with responsible parties, timelines, uh, and you know, exact, exact uh, metrics that they need to be achieving. So um, yes, but, but I wouldn't, I feel like we'll, we'll only want to take the, undertake the effort to get all that information together when we feel very confident that we have a set of goals and strategies that you all are, are on board with, but then also we've got a good feel that the community is on board with as, as well. Yeah, no, I totally agree with having goal first and then once you agree to that developing the strategies, I just wanna make sure that those strategies will identify like positions within government, government committees and all that. So, so in that case, like Jess's recommendation that some of those get called out as specific goals, some may raise to that level, but um, I would hope that all of them are captured in the, the, the process map. Um, Andrew, you were next. 
I was I was thinking about something that Sharna said and relating it back to both Jess and, and Nathan's and wondering whether and, and also the comments from Alex early on that the, these may be so long and I'm wondering whether the some of the goals here that you have can't be subsumed under larger goals and aren't in fact strategies for a larger goal more along the lines of what Sharna was talking about. Uh, so and what I'm thinking of is maybe the overall goal is reduce well increasing ease of travel reducing congestion and improving biking pedestrian infrastructure increasing transit reliability aren't tools to get to that broader goal. Yeah, yeah. I, Josh, if you don't mind, I'll. Yeah, go I, ahead, Travis. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate that, um, and I agree with especially Sharna's comments. And I was just trying to type it in the in the notes, so I'll just be able to say it. That um, I think you're right, and I think you're right, Andrew. Maybe we think of it as that larger goal and think about the tools in the different ways, because you know the addressing traffic congestion is is really tricky at times, and um, it's like how do we best do it? Because I think a lot of times people think. You know, it's it's widening roads or you know adding lanes or something like that. That just creates more traffic. Adding more parking, some you know, it can often create more traffic. So those things you talked about, like, I like the way you actually you put it in improve the ease of travel. I like that actually that phrase. I mean, I feel it. But um, you know, and how do we do that with the tools that we talked about, the, the goals that we noted that people did note in the in the comment period about you know pedestrian and bike safety is a challenge. They want better, they want better sidewalks and, and biking. And that that not only improves the safety and improves everyone's quality of life, but it also does those other things like it improves the ease of travel and it finds a way, it's a, it's a tool that it can be used to fight the congestion. So I appreciate the the comment of thinking that larger on that, that aspect. We, and we may actually re, want to reword that and do that. So. Uh, Shaw, you're next. Yes, uh, just briefly. Uh, to respond to Nate and some of the flow of comments before. In the last cycle, when we did the master plan, we had a, a separate chapter devoted to implementation and actually um, referred some of the, the uh, gnarly uh, problems about impl implementing goals that were set out in the plan to an implementation committee, which then followed up with uh, various of the, of the town boards uh, and commissions, and the uh, you know that effort was more or less successful, but it did traverse a couple uh, several years actually. I chaired it for a while, and then Jessica took over and chaired it. And I think it was a pretty effective way to uh, keep on the radar any number of points without having to actually resolve them definitively with directives from the plan itself. Thank you, Shaw. Anyone else? So if no further questions and thank you uh, for, and comments, thank you all. Um, we appreciate this. And uh, again, I know it's throwing in a lot of information at you and um, you know, we're getting towards that, trying to make decisions, making sure things are uh, inclusive, making sure it's readable, making sure it's accessible uh, and it's a work in progress. So thank you. And like I said, we'll take your comments and questions. We wanna make this uh, available to the public for their consumption and comments and questions uh, uh, starting next week. So if you have um, further refinements that um, you feel it should have, or just, you know, overall comments uh, of where we should be going with this, let us know by the end, or let me know by the end of the week. That would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, thank you all. And so um, we will, basically this is all lead up, if I could segue into the next topic briefly. Uh, the community open house will be um, an expansion of the discussions, which is presented in the one sheet summaries. Uh, and so they will, they will model uh, the committee presentations, which you all have been a part of. So we'll have uh, 
a, in this first meeting, we'll have a two-part meeting where we have uh, a brief introduction and welcome, uh, which would involve some pull everywhere uh, engagement with the uh, audience to get a feel for who's in the room. Uh, we'd introduce the designing dedum process just so people are on the same page with us, let them know, uh, you know, in, in, uh, let them know about the good amount of community engagement that has already occurred, the record amount of uh, poll responses and all of that. Um, and then we would effectively leave the majority of the meeting for those two topics. So economic development, uh, Jen would present uh, briefly, uh, similar to the presentation she gave to the committee, but you know, much shorter and, and more punchy, succinct to the point. And then we would break into breakout group discussions with the audience, uh, with, uh, which would be facilitated by both MAPC staff, uh, the co-chairs, Jeremy and um, Michelle, I think would be give us enough facilitators. Uh, and then the, the committee members, of course, would be divided if you're all attending, divided into those groups and be a part of those discussions you could hear here as well. And then we would have a series of um, questions that prompt the, the groups to discuss in a similar way we just discussed the one sheet summaries about what's important, what's missing, what are the priorities, what do you think is missing the mark, that, that sort of discussion. Uh, and then we would have a brief return to the full audience, uh, some poll, an, a poll everywhere um, concluding poll where people can tell us one thing that was really great about their breakout group discussion from their perspective, and then uh, shift to transportation and connectivity and follow that same model for transportation and connectivity, and then conclude the meeting uh, with some next steps, which would highlight the next two meetings, the open houses. And those, those open houses and the one cheaters for those open houses would all follow the same format and template for the following topics, except those, those two sessions would be divided into three topics each. So we'd go a little bit quicker through each one. Um, hopefully, our hope is that transportation econ and economic development are the two leading uh, topics for this. So it's a little bit tougher right now. We're all getting the feel for what all this looks like and what the information is. But then hopefully uh, with the next one sheet summaries and with the next open houses, this will all feel a little more familiar both to ourselves, but also to the community at large. So questions about that or thoughts about how that might work from your perspectives? Sound good. And you know, um, we definitely want to emphasize that these aren't, um, these are going to be very consolidated presentations. These don't, these won't be nearly what um, we went through, you know, in our two hour meeting. And that's, that's a challenge in itself, trying to, you know, filter down what we presented to you to an easy consumable chunk for the public, but ultimately feel like there's enough to help guide them towards some decision making and discussions. So I, I, I want to emphasize that, that, uh, you know, we're going to make the be, be mindful of people's time. And ultimately, this will be, we'll have a debrief on this because we'd like um, at our, our meeting on the 17th, we'll want to hear from you um, for folks that can attend and we hope uh, you'll do your best to attend and um, also get folks out in the community um, to participate as much as you can as uh, committee members, but ultimately hear from you um, because we have two more of these to come. So we want to continue, we're looking for continuous improvement. And if there's ways we can make things better, or if you think it was a perfect smashing success, we'd love to hear um, on the 17th. Thank you. And to help, to help so, get the- um, I Sorry, see Andrew's question about yeah. the feedback. And Oh. <laughs> um, if I could just um, chime into Andrew's question here about the feedback and um, the note taker. So we have a note taker for the breakout groups and we'll have to decide um, sort of the allocation of that, but we're working on kind of that process of the, um, that facilitator guide and, and those breakouts is what I wanted to um, allude to. And then Josh, I don't know if you could talk about like the integration back into process. Yes, yes. So 
we'll effectively be taking all the discussion that we get at the open houses uh, in just as if they were written comments submitted to us in an email about the one sheeters or any other comment we receive in this uh, working process. And we will um, be looking for patterns uh, that we're seeing from multiple voices in the community. We'll be looking for some where, you know, where there's consensus showing or where people are zeroing in on a, a specific goal or topic as, as being, you know, off or, or a little bit, you know, needing revision in some way. And we'll, we'll use that voice from the community uh, to guide us in refinement of all of this information. And I think all, but as we do that, of course, as I mentioned in a previous response, uh, I think what we'll be doing is um, providing back to the committee what that looks like before we start um, making some of those changes. So we'll have a discussion with you all about that. And Caroline, I know you have to go pretty soon. So maybe I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Um, and can, you can talk a little bit about how people can help us with some engagement on the open house. Yeah, so just a quick update on the engagement so far. Um, so we have sent out the, um, the open house event to the 490 people on our email list that we have continued to grow over this process. Um, so far, we have 30 people who have registered. Um, we are going to be sending out a kit to all of you that includes language, messaging, all the links, etc., with um, the flyers and um, as well as the Facebook event that Michelle has set up for all of us. Um, we did send, uh, we have a final press release that will be getting sent out tomorrow um, and uh, will be sent out to the, to the um, Denim Times and then uh, we will, you know, we are asking everybody here to register for the events um, and, um, you know, share um, on their social media, listservs, um, any board meetings you might have, any committees that you're on, et cetera. Um, I'll also mention that there have been committee and board presentations. So um, Jeremy and, and his team have been um to uh, different uh, presentations for the select board, planning board and housing authority and are working on uh, presentations to the Council on Aging, Dedham Youth Commission, Dedham Anti-Racism Coalition and the Active Transportation Working Group. So a lot, a lot there to make sure that we get folks that uh, really need to come out and sh share their perspective on these issues. Um, I will say we're also trying to make this a fun event. Um, <laughs> So we are going to be kind of uh, trying to get different types of folks to attend, hopefully having, um, you know, those little pieces that make things, um, you know, like, like master planning more exciting for folks who may not be, um, have not participated in the past. And so we're going to be doing some raffles. Hopefully, you know, we're going to pump everybody up um, to really get more involved. And we're going to um, think about how to translate, you know, those one pagers into something that's digestible for people in a space who are maybe just coming to the conversation. And so um, I just wanna emphasize that, you know, uh, we'll, we'll be looking for all types of, of learners and reaching them in different ways. So of course we'll have our website content and one pagers up there for those who really wanna get in the weeds, but we also get people excited um, that have just something to say about how they, you know, what kind of businesses they wanna to go to and what kind of transportation challenges they have. So it's really about bringing, you know, all types of community members together in this event um, and really, you know, not not sharing it as a meeting, but really an event for the community to come together virtually in a time where we have this opportunity to have a master plan, um, which, you know, is a unique opportunity in many ways. Um, and so, you know, here are our, our flyers and our save the dates. Um, we all the save the dates will be resending to everybody, but it does include the save the date for January and March. So just as a reminder again to everybody that those are the, the topics that are gonna be coming up um, and the dates. And so definitely put those on your calendars um, now and um, really excited to kind of move that forward and if you do have individual groups, I'm excited. We'll be following up with, 
you know, some individual conversations we've been having with boards and committees, but I will say the Irish Working Group has been working hard to think about creative ways to get um, folks to, to this event and kind of wrapping up the, the poster campaign. They did a great job uh, over the past weekend to finalize any of the gaps and, and really finish all the distribution of the posters and um, the lawn signs. So just a big shout out to them for all the hard work they've been doing and um, to Michelle and Jess for their leadership as well in the group. Thanks. Thank you, Carolina. That's fantastic. Does anyone have any thoughts or questions about any of that information? Yes, Justin. And then Alex. The, the, the presentations to the boards and committees, is that um, are, is there a listing of when you're appearing with the different boards and committees or is it a matter of just checking the town website? Yeah, no, we don't have a, you'll find us on agendas. No. Um, you know, this week we're, um, you know, today we met with the housing authority, uh, tomorrow's active transportation Thursday, we're meeting with, uh, council on aging. So, I mean, we don't have a necessarily a list, um, happy to provide that. And if we're missing any, but I, I think all the ones that Carolina listed, uh, you know, verbally are where we're yeah. going. And, and are those to solicit, um, feedback from them or, or just as a sort of update as to where this committee is? It's a, an update, invite them to uh, these events if they can get stakeholders that they know um, and if they'd like to participate and become part of the process, you know, come to these meetings and, mm -hmm. um, and participate as much. And, and ultimately, you know, uh, as you know, Dedham, there's a number of committees where um, people participate in local government and, and that's a great outlet to spread the word here. One of the many. Justin, just like one example, we did go to the go to the housing authority meeting earlier this evening and they agreed to share with their list of to mail to their list of residents in Dedham housing the um, open house flyer and information. So um, hopefully an audience that we haven't reached yet or um, are sort of trying to circle back with as we have more for the public to react to. Thank you. I'm um, Alex. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Thank you. And I'm sorry for going in and out. I have a cold. I don't think everyone needs to see me blowing my nose and coughing. So I've been kind of going in and out um, on my video. The March 23rd date, um, mid-March tends to be private school vacation weeks. Um, and I know that it's a small community in Dedham, but it's like doing something over the April, an April break or something like that. It, it might be, um, it just is, it's going to be a difficult date for, for a portion of the community, given that it is going to be in mid-March. It might, I know we might still be Zoom, but I wonder if that's a, if that's a certain date or if it could be something maybe a week later, um, just so it's not in that mid-March section where um, you are going to have, have a number of people that are going to be away. No one's going anywhere. There's no vacations. Mental I vacations. Wonder, I wonder, Alex, I'm, I'm not sure about the date piece, but you, I think you bring up a good point about sort of people being in their homes with their kids, et cetera, and it's kind of limited also child care options right now. Um, I wonder if we can offer some type of virtual like youth activity <laughs> during that time. Um, I'm brainstorming out loud, but I'd, I'd be curious to hear if other folks have, have done that. And um, I have seen some of that be done. Um, and I'm sure, um, you know, the Youth Commission could be interested in something like that. So thanks for bringing that up. I, I just know that I know that talking to some people trying to get them involved in this process, there's, there is feeling in that community that oftentimes it's, it's not considered that there's a separate calendar that happens. Um, and, you know, you know, whether it's a sports tryouts or things like that, it, it does tend to um, rankle people that things are, things tend to tend to get scheduled in that time when even if, you know, people aren't away, it is still considered kind of a, a break from the norm and a break from, from, yeah, work and meetings and things like that. Alex, is it possible for you to find out the exact, is it an exact week that that happens? It's two, it's two weeks. Um, I can, I can find out at least for the ones that are here. I know Nobles and DCD um, coordinate and I believe Ursuline stays with public, the public um, schedule. I can find that out for you, yes. 
Thank you. That'd be yeah. We we I think we can consider that. It's far enough out. We can see. Thank you. Okay. Any other thoughts on any of this? And and as Carolina said, there will be a package coming out to you shortly with um, some of these same flyers and, and graphics and things. So if you want to uh, put them up in a your own social uh, media networks or uh, in an email, et cetera, we, you'd be welcome. We, we welcome you to do that. So that would be very helpful. So with that, um, what we wanted to do with the rest of the session is actually allow you all to just catch your breath and reflect. I think Jessica, you're gonna help, help with that a little bit in terms of structuring the conversation, but um, this is an opportunity for any you know, anything you haven't had a chance to say that we've just had these meetings too packed previously um, and, and we have the uh, ability to speak a lot often and when we're given the chance. So we will stop now and let you all speak more. Great, <clears throat> thanks, Josh. Um, so Josh, you wanna just put the slide down so we can all see each other? Sure. Thanks. So we, um, as Jeremy said in the beginning, we, as we were talking about this meeting, we were originally supposed to be doing, uh, had originally planned on doing the, um, the community engagement, not community engagement, community resources um, topic tonight. But we thought after the public health discussion, um, people just needed more time to reflect and we've been kind of rushing through these meetings. So we wanted to just take a second, take, well, more than a second, um, you know, half hour or so um, and see kind of what's on your minds. And we had, um, some thoughts about questions that we might um, cover, you know, just to refresh memories um, in terms of content, we covered economic development in July, transportation in August, housing in September, and public health and livability in October. Um, we pretty much dug into economic development and transportation tonight. So I don't know if people have any content um, thoughts about either public health or housing that they wanna talk about or things that you've thought about after reflection or if we should go more into kind of some of our process about um, you know, who we're reaching, how we're doing, how the um, nature of our committee meetings is working out for you. So I guess I'll just start with, um, does anyone have any, any thoughts about housing or public health? Just having this conversation about the one pagers and thinking about goals, are there things that you wanna make sure that we incorporate in those? Okay, I'm going to go with no on that one. So, so let's flex to thinking about process. And on this one, I do just want to um, encourage all of us to think about kind of the making space, taking space balance. So um, it's great to hear enthusiasm um, when you have thoughts, but at the same time, just um, if you've spoken up a couple of times, if you could just make space to make sure that people who haven't spoken get a chance. And I may even um, do some cold calling if we haven't heard from people. So um, just wanna make sure that everyone's, you know, we're really getting everybody's feedback. Um, and so to start with, let's just think about kind of the process just to build on the conversation that we just had in terms of Carolina's um, report on the, the outreach working group. But um, you know, one of the things that we need to think about is, in the end, how are we going to make sure that we get buy-in for all of these goals and strategies from the community? And so, curious, you know, if people think that there are um, groups that we may not have reached that we should be thinking about. So, kind of, who haven't we reached? And are there issues or opportunities that we um, need to be addressing? Jessica, could I just ask if we know uh, how many people have responded with the flyers and the uh, lawn signs and whatnot that have gone out? It's, I think it's, um, I don't have the exact numbers. I think that it is generating um, buzz, but not data. Okay. <laughs> is that fair to say, Josh? There's, there haven't been a ton of, there have been some responses. It's not a ton, but I think I'm, it is getting I'm, talked about. On that about. note, I, I know I shared this comment and, um, uh, whoever responded indicated it wasn't important, but um, uh, the one which we've advertised a number of times um, that those that was out that those um, questionnaires were out, um, but we didn't include the website. You know, it was like a teaser that that you had to go out and scan the QR codes, but but so far we haven't just included the link in the advertisements, which um, 
for me, I would only answer that kind of survey at my computer. I would never do it on my phone. And then, um, and then also, when doing it on my phone, uh, you can't submit it anonymously. You have to provide all of your information. And um, I, and I know I've already provided this feedback from the poll. It's not important. But um, I think a lot more people would respond. You, you know, I sign a QR code. It says, "What do you think of Dedham's history?" Um, I don't want to give all my personal information. I don't want my comments in that regard to to have to be tied. So I, the first time I opened it up, start typed in a comment, realized I couldn't fill it out, and then didn't submit. So I, I think there are one. I, I don't think a lot of people will scan QR codes regardless and, and respond. But um, I also think there are ways that we could increase um, data, you know, uh, responses mm -hmm. with existing. Setup. Yep. Thanks, Nathan. So the to the first point, um, the community outreach group had actually intentionally planned that the first stage would be just interacting with the lot, the signs and the posters. Um, and then particularly as weather gets worse and people are out less, that we'd shift to then starting to include links on social media and, um, you know, and web pages and stuff like that. So that was a part of the plan just as a way to kind of build excitement first the people seeing it and then enter their homes basically, you know, via computer to get their feedback that way. Um, to the point about the asking for email address, I mean, what do people think about that? Is it worth, um, yeah, it was also in the Dedham Times too, I think with links, people could do it that way too. Um, what do people think about uh, whether or not we should be asking for email addresses and identifying information? Yeah, go ahead, Josh. And we should just, for this conversation, let's, I mean, unmute and talk. And if it gets unruly, we'll rein it in, but let's just let be freeform. I was just gonna say, I'm a big believer that um, you at least wanna give the option of an anonymity anytime you're asking for honest feedback um, to, to Nathan's point about, especially if there's certain topics that you, you probably don't want, you wanna be able to give the feedback and the honest assessment of what you believe, but not necessarily have your name attached to it. I don't see any reason why we, I'm assuming this is a capability, we couldn't have some uh, option where people could, if they, you know, some question of if they want to be on an email list or whatever, that they could fill it out. Um, but as a requirement to submit the, I know I've opened several surveys in the last year that as soon as it became um, anything about um, getting on an email list or that I didn't want to be on, I didn't fill out the survey at all. So they, they lost the opportunity to get feedback from me because they were requiring me to sign up, especially during election year. I don't need any more extra emails that I'm not necessarily interested in. So, um, but I think having the option there would be good. Josh, can we do that with that? I know Carolina's not on the horn, but. I I don't know the answer to that because it's you, the, uh, I know that it was a labor from our IT folks to actually get the um, text message responses set up. So I'd have to inquire with them about what, what's involved, but I can look into that and see. Yeah. And remember, this was, uh, this was new technology that, the gov uh, that Dedham employed, this text thing, so, and QR codes. So that in itself was uh, a big hurdle, but uh, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear some feedback on that. And, you know, maybe the, I mean, we still have many more community events to go um, that maybe there's a way we can anonymize this a little better to allow greater participation. Uh, yeah, just, I, I echo whatever, but, um, I, there are a lot of things that I think people would be more honest with and or not or only respond to if it was anonymous, um, including myself. So I, I often stop surveys as soon as they ask. But um, the QR code was just to get to a URL and then it was just a website. So it was our choice in the website to require it. That's not new technology. Yeah, it was just the idea. Let's let's do something different, and and that's not just asking people to click on a link. And you know, we we trying, and we're we're open to change. But I'm glad we broke through the text messaging break uh, barrier here, and that we're going to be uh, stepping it up a notch. Okay, thank you. Any other thoughts about? Um either you know groups that we have that we're reaching really well groups that we may not be reaching well how we make sure that we have um you know full feedback and support of the community i know one group folks have brought up um sorry jessica is uh mm -hmm. churches and whether they're not i mean <laughs> 
we're in a COVID era. So whether they're meeting or not, I'm not quite sure. And I'm not that tuned in. Is that, is that a group and uh, stakeholders in Dedham that we're missing? Is that important? Um, just throwing that out there. Anyone? Yeah, we do have we do have the churches in our stakeholder list, but I don't know that we've done specific outreach for them. Yeah. I'll take that that uh, there's some work to be done on that that uh, that segment. I can only speak to my own experience, which is uh, St. Paul's Episcopal, which my wife is a member on and, and attends the services online every Sunday. Um, and I certainly haven't heard any mention of it in the announcements or you know, any reach out to that community in any way that I've heard about. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's work to be done in that that segment. I mean, it's tough, you know, we can't go on the, the street corner and hand out flyers and interact with people these days. And I mean, it, it's tough. And, uh, and, but that doesn't mean, you know, we're, we aren't trying to do new ways or find new avenues to get people engaged. I need like a <clears throat> people who work in Dedham and commute into Dedham. One of the things from the transportation study that surprised me was just how many of those people we have. We have more people coming in than going out, which surprised me. Um, and I thought before that we probably needed to hear something from that community, but they're very, very hard for us to get in touch with just institutionally. And COVID doesn't make that any easier. So I have no idea whether we've managed anything at all along those lines. I think we have more work to do to tap young people. And I don't mean kids, I mean, you know, college age, at just after college. Um, I, I have no suggestions on how to do that. <laughs> other than I hear they're on things other than Facebook. Um, Certainly not email. <laughs> no, yeah, so, but I do think there's a group vested in the future um, and making decisions about you know, whether they're going to stick around at them, that would be good to try and engage. Maybe someone could volunteer to make a TikTok video. <laughs> You're on it, Jim. No, I don't even have it. <laughs> I just know of it. <laughs> you bring up the idea, you have to own it. And that shuts down discussion for the evening. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> Mute. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm curious, Josh, do you have a sense of, are we in a, 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 a tough spot? Are we getting less feedback than, you know, in the non-COVID era? Or are we getting no, I a... I don't think so. I think that we, we did quite well. I mean, if you recall the, the surveys, which were so successful, were technically in the COVID area. They, they, um, brand, they, they spanned that transition um, so, and I think that was, that was a tougher time for many of us because it was all so new. And now here we are, you know, going, going out a year strong or however long it will be. Um, so I, I think that the, the, we, I guess the, the jury is always out in a process like this. We will see how the feedback around these one sheeters and the open houses is. Um, and we hope to get a good amount of people involved with that. I, 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 I think Personally, that the um, poster and sign campaign was a was an experiment itself because it's it's a it's a physical presence in this strange time, and so um, how, how successful that was we don't really have a benchmark for, um, and so that, but I think it's good to have a way to reach people who might not be who this process might not be visible to on a screen just to let them see it in the community. So that was the importance of that effort really. In my mind, um, so, uh, but I don't. I don't think we should take it as an indication of whether or not participation in this process is, you know, waxing or waning. So, well, I guess I'm, I'm still thinking about the people working in Dedham thing, and one one group we haven't. I haven't heard us reaching out to. I don't even know whether we have any presence in this community as organized labor. Uh, I mean, Amazon, you know, the big employers in town. I don't think are unionized workplaces. Uh, does you know is there service employees local at some of the hotels 
might have some input for people who are working in Dedham. I, I honestly don't know the answer. I, I mean, I'd be I, yeah. to have some participation from contractors and the like. And some, I some. do know that, that there's a carpenters union. Um, I know because they, they go to a couple of the political events. This is all through political process. Of course, the teachers union and then um, some of the construction trades do have at least representatives in the area. I don't know about um, service workers. I would think they'd have to be unionized given the size of some of the hotels and some of the other um, places. That's great. I haven't that's a great idea, though. I know that hey. teachers, I know the teachers union. I don't really know any other ones. I think Jay O'Brien would have be a good mm -hmm. resource for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Andrew, you just mentioned also some of the biggest employer, like Amazon. Is that work just going to Amazon directly and trying to interact with them, or like Legacy Place trying to interact with the employees there? Uh, you know, there's there's a couple of really large employers that might be worth you know, there, there are more people there than a church or something like that. So is it, is it worth going directly to some of the employers? Well, we have talked about reaching businesses before. I mean, obviously our focus has been small businesses, but obviously large businesses do employ a lot of people and they generate a lot of economic activity. They help our tax base. Well, I know, but I mean, I was actually talking about the employee. You know, I bet if we yeah. talk to Amazon, they probably have an employee way of communicating with their hundreds of employees, right? And and I would think there, there would be similar for Norfolk and Dedham insurance and whatever, whoever we decided. So if we just went through the top employers and asked if there was a way to communicate with their employees, um, then we're getting individuals, not the business. Mm -hmm. Then we also could get the business. Yeah, so Michelle and I can take that to the next outreach working group, because that is to start one of our big tasks um, that we're looking at now is just particularly given the topics for the December workshop and the economic development aspect. Um, we have been kind of creating a list of bit like some of the larger employers and thinking about how to make sure that we could get people there. So um, it may be that I think we were originally thinking about um, smaller businesses and how do we get kind of the independent businesses there. But I think we also want to make sure that we are reaching out to um, to ask some of those larger employers to to spread the word among their employees if they can. So I, I would just add that um, I think if you're looking at large employers, Norfolk County would probably be, and they do have organized labor, labor with the um, correctional officers, et cetera, uh, court officers. I think general dynamics maybe would be more receptive. I would leave this to possibly Jeremy and Jess and Sarah, whether you want to even touch Amazon these days, because I would say, even if it is their employees, if there was just a whiff of Amazon directing any portion of the master plan, I could only imagine the reception that we would receive from numerous neighborhoods within the town. So, but I do think that Norfolk County and, and general dynamics might be a little more palatable. Yes, point well taken, Dan. <laughs> Great. We could have them put a big blue smile on the front cover of the master plan and spend yeah. through the whole event, but um, so. What about some of the auto dealerships? Um, you know, all of the employees there from the sales reps on down to the service people, auto mechanics. I mean, we've got a lot of car dealerships up and down the corridor mm -hmm. here. You know, that's um, actually interesting because the select board meets Thursday night to do all of our annual um, like permit renewals. So car sales, mechanics, common victuallers, like all that sort of thing. I wonder, I mean, I'll ask if it's appropriate to send a communication with those notifications of renewal, assuming they pass to those contacts at each business. I think it would make a lot of sense both to engage the business owner who has a vested interest in what we're doing, but also to say, you know, if you have other employees or stakeholders or customers, you know, that you mm -hmm. can share with. Yeah, that'd be great. 
get them get them in a way that they, you know they're going to open that piece of mail anyway. <laughs> Great. Well, should we pivot to talking just a little bit about um, kind of our meetings and how those have been working? So we've had we still have um, four more topic area discussions ahead of us. And so I think it's useful to think about kind of what's going well with those, um, what we could do, do better. We've tried um, pretty consciously to, to experiment and mix up the um, way we've done those meetings. So, um, and, and so Josh um, can fill in anything that I forget, but we've had, you know, some have had um, like the poll everywhere. So we've had like word cloud ways to get people, um, you know, give chance for, for kind of the committee to engage over the course of the presentation. Um, the last one we broke into small groups um, for quick conversations, but just be great to hear kind of, you know, what about the, it, they are long meetings. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of um, content that we're getting. And so we just wanna think about, um, you know, what's the best way to make sure that the, you know, you all have a chance to give input, to make sure you have reflection time, um, and just, you know, just generally what's, you know, what are you liking? What could we be doing better? I, I found the breakout groups um, the best so far. I think the thing that <clears throat> I've struggled with on all of these meetings is the fact that um, sort of right after we began to get to know each other and to be able to talk, we had to go away. And this format um, has made it extremely difficult to carry on a conversation, to to get you know comfortable with the, the folks that we're sharing the screen with. Um, and that uh, breakout group was sort of the first time and you know a small group. And even though it was a short amount of time and it was an awful lot to digest that that time, um, it's still it just sort of felt one of the first times had the chance to engage. Um, so let's do it again. Well, I think the next topic as we move towards, you know, uh, cultural and, and historic assets, much more tangible topic, which uh, as opposed to public health, which is definitely new and, you know, we're still trying to figure that out. So I'm happy to, uh, if, if MAPC wants to do that again and and you know unfortunately we ran short on time and we apologize for that but uh we could provide making sure that there's ample time to do i mean we'll we'll get a chance to do the breakout rooms at the open house and maybe josh we could try that again at the next meeting if everyone else feels the same we'll we'll give it a whir whirl i i will frankly admit and this is perhaps a personal failing that um i find it hard to focus over two hours of listening on a Zoom call at the end of the day. I do this all day anyway, and I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> every chance, it was just as it says, every, every chance I get to break it up a little is mm -hmm. welcome. And by breaking up, what do you mean? We need an intermission, we need a snack break, we need visual or um, different, different methods of engaging us. Is that where you're looking? Um, well, something like the breakout or the or the polls or the a chance to enter chance to sit sitting and listening for you know sitting on our butts and listening for two hours just I lose focus I just do. All right, I'll have us get up and do jumping jacks while we're participating next time. I, I also um I like I like this grouping a bit. Some of the especially in the beginning topics economic transportation were quite frankly over my head and a lot of the just um just the verbiage. Okay of how so much of this, I mean, I've never done any of, any of the consultancy. I've always had done more math and, you know, math and science. And so I, I had a hard time um, digesting it and making it kind of real to me. And so I think doing something even like this, even if it's on a small group where I felt that more questions could be put um, on a level that, I, that was more understandable. Some of it just, it was just, it wasn't for me, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, um, Become, it didn't become real because it was just so high reaching and high level uh, that I had a hard time with it. So, so Alex, I think that's useful feedback and, you know, Josh, for, for you to think about and just to, in terms of giving um, all of your different colleagues, just to kind of, I know we've been trying to do that when we do the publicities, you know, and flyers and stuff is just make it less jargony. But um, 
but I think that's a great reminder, Alex, because you know some some people came in with certain um, specialties. So like we we are great on transportation, right? We've got three transportation like experts in our committee, um, but most of us don't understand a lot of the terminology, and I think that's going to be true for very you know for different topics. So um, I think we can just all do a good job of um, I think trying to notice when there's jargon. And then I also would say, you know, that it's okay at any point, um, you know, if you're, if there is a presentation and there's something that does seem like it's above your head or it's not familiar, it makes sense to stop and ask for clarification, right? Because if that's true for you, it is also probably true for anyone, you know, other people on the committee or people, members of the public who are watching. So I think that's also just something that we should all, you know, feel free to do, right? I think it makes it a better project if we're making sure that we all get it. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Alex. Our, our planner jargon is a constant struggle that we constantly slap ourselves about, but we can't help but do it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Anything Any else? Other? Yeah, sorry, Jeff. Yeah. No, just other thoughts? All right. So Josh, Great. you want to talk next steps? Thanks everyone for <laughs> taking the time to do this. It's, I think it's really helpful, and good for our process. Yeah, thank, thank you for that discussion. I think it's helpful for us too to hear and just see where the committee is at. And it's always good just to take a breather too. So um, let me just show you guys the schedule. Oh, here, here's our meetings that are coming up. So uh, as we've discussed, we're after uh, this, we'll be back on that schedule of topics. So the 15th of December, just after the open house, We'll be talking about natural cultural historic resources. Then uh, on the 19th of January into the new year, we'll have a split meeting, the only meeting where there's two, two topics, but they're very closely related. So we'll be talking about community services and facilities and governance at the same time. And then we'll wrap it all up with land use um, at the end in uh, February. And then that will that is also phased and spaced with the following two open houses to give us ample time to get the one sheeters together for those topics and then have uh, those, those sessions with the community. From there, um, in, in the spring, we, we have, we will design, we, haven't, we have a general idea of what the uh, needs are in terms of what we need to talk about and have as a committee, but we, we need to design in a little more detail what the programming looks like for ourselves, both publicly and with you all uh, starting in March. So we'll, we'll stay tuned for that. Um, and here we're tracking along very well with this schedule that we don't change this graphic. It's the same graphic we put up every meeting, except for I think the yellow dot moves uh, with the month. But we're, you know, we're right on track with the topic goals, strategies and the one sheeters. Um, and that's all flowing very nicely. And then you can see as we round the corner into the spring, we'll be thinking, we'll be moving from these summaries into uh, full chapters of these topics, which is where we will get, you know, to dive into all those details that we talked about this evening. And then that gets wrapped into finally, as we round the corner into summer and next fall, actions and implementation. And at that point, we will be very close to having a full draft plan. Uh, and then we can think about what the, what the launching pad for that plan document looks like and how we get feedback on it as a document. But we have a long ways to go before then, so that's getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. So immediate next steps, uh, if you could please get us feedback on the one sheet summaries, whatever you have, even if you just have a single thought or if you have a lot, let us know. Uh, we've gotten a few of those already, so thank you so much for that. And then we, we plan to get those, get that feedback incorporated and get the one sheet summaries posted for the community uh, at the beginning of December in, in lead up to the 7th. Then if you could also take it upon yourselves to promote however you can the open houses and join us in that effort 
to get the word out. And please do yourself also RSVP using that bit.ly link on the screen. It should be in some other emails and information you've gotten recently. And then uh, we'll see each other again on the 15th. Can I make a note here? Um, and if everyone's okay, I was hoping we might be able to start just a, I know we talked about two hour meetings are long, but I was hoping we could have a bit of uh, nestle in a little bit of time to do a debrief of the open house. Would folks be okay to meet a little early that meeting? Um, is that a no go? Yes go? Or should we find time in our regular scheduled meeting or run a little later? Anyone? Open to starting at say 6.30, 6.45, just to do a quick debrief. Is everyone cool with that? I prefer to start earlier rather than go later. People want to do like a um, thumbs up or for 6.45. And you can eat and talk chat. too. Yeah, or yeah, or, I mean, Cool. Sounds right. good. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thank you all very much. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, yes, yes, in whatever form it takes. <laughs> what are people I'm, doing? I'm happy to Zoom with anybody who's gotten I know. Because <laughs> we only stay healthy. Yeah. <laughs> We were just talking about, we've been trying to figure out, we are ordering food so that there's no cooking and we can just spend time like outside hiking or something beforehand. And then we're actually trying to figure out Matt's folks, if they're nervous about eating out, we we're going to eat outside with Matt's folks. But now I'm like, maybe we just skip the dinner. They could come over for like a distant fire pit and we'll send them home with food. <laughs> like, <laughs> No idea. How are people handling it? I think we're going to cook yeah. a giant turkey for three of us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sauce is made already. Ooh. Family recipe. Dead Not simple. Okay. Better buy it. Just cheaper, simpler, and better to make it. Yeah. Take it easy, everyone. All right. Bye. Have a great holiday. Bye, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Thanksgiving. Bye. Thanksgiving. Good night. Thanksgiving.